All right, so under the assignment page, we got introduced to an overall art creation and consumption cycle. This is all just to help you understand that your ideas are everything, right? All techniques and stuff can flow from that, but you can have a great career with just good ideas. And part of a creative skill is not just learning the tools, it's learning how to nurture and get behind and interrogate and make the most of your original ideas even the stupid ones. The theme for our final project is anti-censorship and promoting diverse opinions. And that is in many ways the same thing. It's that your ideas matter. They have value, no matter how absurd. And of course, there are larger societal issues, political issues, interpersonal issues, identity issues, all of that which overlap nicely with ideas of anti-censorship and promoting diverse opinions. I'll get inspiration from lots of things, so I'll give you lots of weird tidbits. So, But seldom do we glimpse the stars that shine above the pollution of our prosperity. This is about self-reflection, right? So even if there are things you are uncritical of, like our prosperity, <laughs> or whatever you think is prosperous in your own life, in your own experience, in your own worldview. Everything has its byproducts. And though they might be positive for you, they might be the pollution for someone else, or they might actually be pollution for you, if not in this moment, in some other moment in your life, right? And then what are the stars that shine above that? So it's really not just taking one point of view easily, interrogating it back and forth, understanding that everything has value in a certain way, even the, the things you disagree with the most. And another point of view on this theme, the desire for more positive experience is itself a negative experience. And paradoxically, the acceptance of one's negative experience is itself a positive experience. Right? So lots to chew on, right? These are hard things for you to do an English paper about and to be persuasive. This is more in the realm of philosophy. The beauty about visual art is that you can get at a lot of these nuances and contradictions just by having imagery that you feel strongly connected to. Right. So we have some past student examples. We'll talk about that. At the end of the day, your final art project is you following an idea through. And I give you lots of process examples just to show you how diverse it can be. This one's from Behance. This is just someone doing their own version of a Magic the Gathering card, right? So what do they do? They first sketch it out. They have their own reasons for wanting to do this particular card and wanting to change it. They come up with their own version of the character and their own style. They use really, I think, beautiful digital coloring techniques with a lot of um, diffusion and dissolve. And this becomes their their end product, right? Whatever your original idea. Now that, that person wants to design Magic the Gathering cards and make them look different than they really exist. You can come into this project with that kind of idea because you want a, your own version of a Magic the Gathering card in your portfolio. So make that fit this idea, right? Here's another one. This is someone that does gig posters you know, for independent bands coming through towns, whether they're usually silk screened, but they're all digitally designed, goes through their whole kind of ideation process, their inspirations, the ways they think about design, their art historical inspirations, and then the end products. This one is about album cover design, right? And even though it's done digitally, they're referencing old woodblock prints. So this is the actual finished album cover and, and back cover art. But it talks about like the full sketching, the full ideation, right down to, I like this example because it's right down to type, right? You can incorporate type into your final project if you need to, but don't just do it as an afterthought. Really think how it enhances and works with the project. Even like photographing the band, doing caricatures, 
that could be an approach. And then this one, just fun poster design, right? For a Godzilla poster. Concept sketches. Notice how all of these thumbnails, they already know what their format's going to be because they're doing a movie poster format. They're looking at inspiration, references from comic books, from movies, from fan art. And then they're figuring out their process. And their process has a lot to do with digital inking, vectors, multiple colors, and then type design. And they put that all together to get their finished poster as a digital design. And then that actually gets outputted through color separation into three screens that are printed on white paper with, you can see the half tones to get the finished result. Cost effectively and the full idea through to completion. Sometimes you want to just start with absurdity. So what do you do if you just don't have ideas? I like absurdity. So this is, these are really basic bot tools. So this is the Inspira bot. So if you generate, it will give you an image and a, a quote, right? An AI generated quote. When some see a coroner, others see monkey. Gets you thinking. But maybe it gets you thinking towards an idea you want to use. So when I'm stuck, I like these tools. Examine the sweetness, not the virtues. That one's a little too sincere. But like a meme generator, this is like an inspirational poster generator. Don't let anyone tell you that you are not horny. It's important to remember these things. Climate change is opium for the global elite. Yeah, that's, that's pretty uh, pertinent this week when they just released the UN climate findings and they're not good and we're not doing a lot okay another example i like this one a lot this was an early twitter bot experiment it's called fortune cookie bot it's based on a thousand fortune cookies and based on the same thousand fortune cookies it used to do it every 10 minutes now it does it like once every few days it just generates a fortune cookie you show your vulnerability you are known for your diplomatic skills okay, that one's not that great faith is knowing what you dish out will come to you god these are also sincere broke is only temporary poor is a golden one for him who has found his work yeah so all of these things can get you started with ideas because absurdity is a great place to start it generated this one everywhere you choose to go a little more hard work your creativity takes you to success right so maybe it just motivates you now i give you a whole playlist of videos so those of you who are here on Wednesday working on your projects, working on your refined sketches, will have these playing in the background. These are different content creators I really respect in fine art, in commercial art, um, in advertising, in children's books, in poster design, in book covers, just everything. And it talks through how they do their ideas. Maybe you want to look at it on your own. It is not at all required, but it is there for you. And then this is where we start. So, you have your overall theme. Anti-censorship and promoting diverse opinions. The first thing you need to do is you have to give yourself your own assignment within that. So this in the creative world is called the brief. Brief because it's short. What is your, your goal? What is the problem you are solving? You're going to write a one sentence statement summary to give yourself your assignment. Right? So I'm already going into this because of the absurdity. I want to do a, a disco ball turkey. You know, not a live turkey, but like the, the frozen butter ball kind of turkey carcass that we all cook for Thanksgiving. I want that to be covered in mirrors, fractals like a disco ball. So I'm already thinking disco ball turkey. 
Now I have to associate it with anti-censorship, promoting diverse opinions, these ideas. How do I do that? So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to use a disco ball turkey to show that everyone is special, but what makes them special is usually not valued by the status quo. That's going to be my statement somewhere. And I can tweak that, make it work. But that's going to generate my ideas. Once I've written that out, and I want you to actually write it out, then I'm going to immediately do what's called acknowledging the cliches and start my brainstorming that way. I can write down or I can sketch the obvious ways to do that. Now, I already have a disco ball turkey, so that's not the most obvious thing. But how can I make that seem... How can I fit my statement summary in an obvious way? It might be my first thumbnail sketch. Well, I could do a whole bunch of regular turkeys, right? Kind of all lined up. Or maybe maybe all on a dinner table looking beautiful. And then there's this disco ball turkey kind of off-center. And it's the one that doesn't stand out. Right? That's one kind of obvious idea to show something being special. Not, not fitting in but also standing out in its own way. So when you look at it a different way. Um, what's another thing? Well, maybe I think of the Thanksgiving meal and I think of cliches like Norman Rockwell's Thanksgiving Saturday uh, evening post cover, which has been parodied many times, right? And I think of like the family looking over a table and look how happy and cisgendered and white they are over this turkey but if instead of that turkey there's like a disco ball turkey right and they all look shocked and appalled so that might be another thumbnail i do really quickly these thumbnails can be such loose sketches but they can be informed by things so they don't need to happen in a vacuum get back to where i was so once you do that once you kind of acknowledge cliches, you can immediately generate some thumbnail sketches. I have a link to what thumbnail sketches are. It's about quick sketching. It is so worth it, no matter what you're doing. And you want to limit your level of detail. Right? There'll be time for a refined sketch later. But what you do want to use your thumbnail for is to contain your format. So always draw a small box like this. Don't fill a page with your thumbnails. Small. The smaller the better. Maybe even the size of your thumbnail. Maybe a little bigger than that. But try out a lot of ideas quickly. I want at least three of them before I talk to you about your ideas. And in, in an ideal circumstance, to really interrogate your idea, have just one sentence summary. So I am going to use a disco turkey. Right? So all my thumbnails might be generated from that same idea. So pick your strongest idea and then force yourself to do thumbnails. The magic number, in my experience, is always five. Do five thumbnails. This is the weird thing about it. Because your first one is the cliche. Your second one's crap. Your third one is brilliant. But you don't recognize how brilliant the third one is until you've done another two that show you know the third one was the right one. That's just kind of how it works. So do them quickly. Right? These are using past student examples. But these are all working on, on this uh, statement summary. I'm going to come around and I'm going to critique your, as part of this proving ground, your thumbnail sketches and your statement summary, right? So try to have a strong statement summary for me. And I'm just going to help encourage you towards the one that I think has the most potential and then maybe point you to, towards some resources because the next step is you're going to collect info and be inspired by it, right? Like this student was inspired by different memes. That's going to generate for you your refined sketch. Again, doesn't need to be super clean, but is going to be more conceptually refined. Like you understand what each component is doing and why. Then, and this is, I'm going to be doing this with you next class. Maybe by the end of this class. It depends how, how ready you are. Um, but we're going to have a second critique. And at that second critique, we're going to talk about your workflow. Like what are the best methods? Digital painting, digital...